What up my freaks, Rowena Sensei here with part 41 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we have acquired a cold hell brass at last, took a little bit longer than I would have liked, and I probably should have, uh, uh, well, put in the work slash the money to just get him on field a little bit earlier, but hey, uh, he's in here close to the end. So, before we get started, we do have a couple of things to consider. As some of you may know, or probably most of you know that play the game, uh, we have just had a hotfix. Unfortunately, the hotfix has removed the previous beta version, which was compatible with the SFO, and thus the current version of SFO is unplayable at the current time. And currently, I am running the beta of the version with the current hotfix patch, but uh, there may be instability, and I don't know how long this dynamic lasts. A lot of people couldn't launch anything whatsoever, and I'm just hoping that the campaign remains stable enough to finish off. Fortunately, we are headed towards the end, uh, hopefully soon. The uh, end is nigh, has one turn remaining, and the orcs at least will spawn next turn, and we gotta complete as much of our world conquest as we can. We're doing pretty well in that regard and the enemies are dropping uh, like flies blessed by Nurgle as this campaign is and uh, well we're going to have to move on through it now another thing we actually did manage to once again uh, reach the engagement threshold I <laughs> I don't know what's going on it's been a roller coaster of emotions but I suppose that uh, well uh, that's appropriate for a chaos campaign so here we are another hour-long episode for uh, this campaign campaign and once again 250 likes and 40 comments and the next episode will be an hour long as well i don't know how many episodes there are remaining and we will try to hurry it up a little bit more than we've been doing before instead of you know meandering around perhaps as much but uh, yeah as long as the engagement threshold is reached we will have the hour-long episodes and on top of that remain on the main channel i think that as soon as we drop below the engagement threshold again i will banish this campaign to the other one and then probably pre-record it all the way to the end because uh, well once again we don't know when another patch is going to screw everything up and I'm not sure if this one will work but well I'll find out anyway I feel like I've been talking a lot let's uh, let's prepare let's get to it we got one turn to prepare leave everybody move everybody and go uh, Azazel you're gonna head to the shrine of Sotek probably could have put you in a stand there's no need to put you in a stance there's a bunch of peasants a bunch of peasants all right, I'll resolve that real quick, and I don't remember if you had the range, but uh, suck it. You did have the range. I did want more XP on the uh, uh, on the various chosen in this army. There's a lot of new units in this army after all, and, well, they needed XP. Uh, we can repair you, we can repair you. We're going to have to transfer all these territories, probably to Skeggy, so that they make some good use out of the... Uh, uh, out of all the... Hello. Whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, so that they make good use out of the... Wait, you can't reach this guy, can you? I don't think so. Uh, so that they make good use out of the... What was I saying before I got confused by the presence of these armies? Uh, the ports, the ports. That's the one, that's it. There we go. I've unconfused myself for the next... 30 seconds or so. Anyway, Gillator, uh, you've got places to be as well. I think we're going to march you over to Lorelorn Forest. So let's pop you into March Stance and let's... Attrition, eh? Mm, I mean, I guess we could go into Middenheim. Or we could just move like this. Oh, right, Gillator is one of the close to max or even possibly max movement range ones. Uh, so he'll be fine. We will move Kagan along with him all the way over here and we might even uh, send Bellacor to join the fun for a little bit mm, certainly a possibility his army is still a little bit too weak to completely act on its own but it may be strong enough to either help out with Lorelorn or burn down some of these things oh probably should have burned down Wrecker's point as well maybe this army can do it possibly with a combination of this army 
Hmm, nothing about it. Anyway, now let's keep on moving. Prince Sigvald, you, I believe, are going to go for Phoenix Gate. I don't think there's any army nearby to punish you for it, so you're just going to go for it. And Malekith can hopefully take Tordranel or something like that, though either way we'll most likely be transferring a bunch of stuff. That is obviously not worth fighting. Mm, solid amounts of favor for our trouble, though. And I guess we keep sacking for the XP, and I guess it's still a decent amount of cash. Don't move too far. All right, you're good, Shrieking Blade. Go back into Gate and Occupy, which gets it at Tier 1. Let's build up all of this stuff. We might just keep the Gates. I think, uh, well, kind of sort of have the gates watching over stuff. Oh, though I guess we'll probably need to transfer a gate to Malchus so that he can sort of uh, grab interior territories. Uh, there's certainly a possibility of that. But anyway, uh, Demahar Crow Brother, head to Elysia, please. What do we have here in terms of defenses? Will you be able to auto-resolve this? And will another army attack you? Remains to be seen. Oh, it looks like one of the blood letters will die for our trouble. A little bit annoying. Do you actually have defenses here? No, this would be a field battle. Probably a rather quick one at that. All right, so we'll fight that. Might even do that one manually. But let's move everybody else around so we know what we're doing. Village, you are going to fight at the end game scenario, so just stay right there. Valky is about to probably... I mean, we could take Evershale, we could take Toralir, or... And we could try to grab Tyrion's attention. Uh, let's go into Ambush Stance and pop you right outside of White Peak, right here. I don't know if this will work, but hopefully Tyrion will go for the relatively, or seemingly, I should say, undefended White Peak and get that uh, rematch, or not so much rematch, but uh, match, let's say, in between him and Valkyrie that we've been wanting. Malefex are kind of in the same position, go into ambush stance and hope that we can hit Mr. Gorok. Uh, Chant has a long way to travel down to the Empire of Undeath to begin the aerial assault upon it. And when he arrives, and possibly when a few other armies arrive, that's when we'll uh, hit the place. You are going to go up to Carrick Drawn. I guess an encamp stance. Oh, I have been wanting to get you... Okay. We need to reduce the use of regular marauders in these armies. I might even delete this aspiring champion unit. Uh, but I did want to get Mutaliths in here, so that's what we're going to do. Mutalith one for you. And go to the edge of this, and hopefully we'll be able to get another one shortly. I like the idea of the Mutalifts together with the Chaos Trolls and with the Hounds, and... Uh, mm, maybe the Giants? I haven't decided upon that yet. I just want a, a bunch of regenerative units and then keep this guy as a fire uh, lord, possibly a fire... Uh, fire ooh, or we could devote you to Zinch. Hmm, both of those are tempting. Devoting you to Zinch is sort of warp fire, and we do have a Mutalith in here now. Could maybe mix a few other Zinch units in here. Frankly, we've been using Zinch the least out of all the Chaos Gods in this campaign. Nurgle's uh, definitely top by far. So we may want to get a few more Zinch units in some of the newer armies, as we're probably not going to have too many new armies uh, anymore, though we are building up the new ones, effectively. Anyway, uh, let's take Jisoro here. I don't know why the elves are here, probably attacking the uh, the dead. And... Okay. <laughs> uh, the the, uh, the complete lack of garrison threw me a little bit. Uh, raise the... No, sack the place and then occupy the place. It does have furs in it, after all. And suck and channeling staff and ooh, I was going to get you an exalted hero as well, weren't I? Weren't I? And let's repair you. And let's get you uncollecting. And let's get you probably exploit vessels just for the movement. Where is the closest place we can generate an exalted hero? Uh we can generate one here. Which is reasonably far, but just do it. Alright, and let's nurgle you up. To play around with Festus. Bus for Chosen, bus for Regeneration, nice. Uh, don't care for Burning Body, but Vanguard for Chaos Knights. Don't know if uh, Festus will have any, but who knows, he might. He might. If we have a little room. Though, to be honest, the problem is it's going to take so long to level them, they'll just never get to Chaos Knight form at this point, I think. Though it remains to be seen. Anyway, let's continue. Malefex is in ambush. Samoth Painbringer is raiding and hopefully leveling his last troops. Demahar, you're going to fight manually. And who is Akarak? Oh, right. You're supposed to ferry these units to Bellacor and southward in general. All right, just keep moving. Uh, 
Like these are roughly at the same speed, so head out here. I wish I remember. I think Felcargo was a fight, unfortunately, which this army probably wouldn't be able to take. And at least you can head out to sea, or at least you did head out to sea. All right, the rest of that looks good to me. So now let's try out the flames of Zinch. I was talking about the lack, lack relative lack of uh, Zinch in focus. Let's uh, well, let's change that up. Uh, let's pop the banner of Eternal Flame on some of these melee troops. I do notice that the enemy has a Terror Geist as well as Kemler. Don't think going to be a few problem causing units in here. Uh, Razor Standard on. I'm going to say the Spears. The Spears, because it'll be the Terror Geist and possibly the Knights that'll cause us some problems. And then lastly, a War Banner, obviously, on our single Soul Grinder. All right, let's burn a Knight the Dead. Alrighty, here we go. I've been waiting to see this army in its new and improved form, and I'm excited to uh, see how it does. Uh, burninating uh, the undead. Uh, let the fires of Zinch confuse them, or the fires of chaos. Uh, same thing, really. Anyway, anyway, we've got tons of flamers that should be very effective against the pile of enemy army. Of course, a uh, pile of enemy army. A uh, pile of enemy units. Of course, our marauders are going to route maybe not at the drop of a hat but uh, fairly quickly if we let them so we will have to be careful there and hopefully turn them into uh, chaos warriors soon as we can we're gonna start by moving in to close the distance and smash that enemy uh, terror geist both with some blue fires of zinch as well as those magical javelin throws from our soul grinder and those are pretty darn effective at sniping things and a couple more shots and a couple more blue fires should do it and smashy smashy very nice and it looks like the terror geist is down to half hp well we can do better than that hit him again with the blue fires downing another quarter of its hp and then keep on sniping with those javelins this is the biggest threat on the field the terror geist also being anti-large and thus quite effective at uh, knocking out models of flamers real quick but alas kemler won't be able to uh, use it in such a manner and, ooh, it survived that one. All right, well, let's see if it survives the next. Somehow I don't think so, despite the eye and the invocation of the heck kept it up. It's got 1300 HP by the looks of it, but it's going to get hit simultaneously with both blue fires and javelins, and it gets knocked all the way back. Damn, I don't think I've ever seen these uh, big old aerial models get knocked back like that. At least uh, not into the death animation. And there we go, a bloody and ignominious and for the one terror guys that looks like that is somewhat angered Kemmler so he's going to be sending some units towards us we are going to react to that as well however as our flamers are moving forward we also have a decent amount of flyers to add support should the bats attempt to overwhelm our uh, fiery uh, floating boys here we're gonna get a few shots away with our soul grinder as well as our marauder horsemen of zinch they're not going to stay in this army most likely but for now they will serve we have been getting a decent amount of buffs of marauder horsemen though they are at 36 melee or 36 missile strength which ain't too bad huh i do have to wonder how these guys would function as an army hmm you know, if we have time, I don't know if we will, but if we have time, I might build an all-ranged army. As specifically an all-ranged Zinchen army, which we haven't done yet. And just combine a bunch of horrors with flamers and tons of marauder horsemen, and just see how that range does. Sort of a combination of the armies that we have. Anyway, the enemies are moving towards us. The bats are getting burned out of those skies, and that should be damn effective against them. Look at them drop down in droves. The dead approach, but they are a slow-moving faction and will have a difficult time getting to us before they're all turned into ash and cinder. Uh, looks like ooh, we're going to hit our own um, exalted hero a little bit with our flames. Definitely gotta be careful with those. Like 
like the uh, proverbial two. What is it? Two. Uh, mm, damn it! <laughs> I lost my train. My train of thought there. You know, the blade cuts both ways. I, I want to say that about the uh, about the fires of Zinch, basically. That's what I was getting at. Anyway, I'll let the fires of Zinch continue, though the dead are starting to approach. We also got to keep in mind that the uh, um, flamers, led by the ever chosen Zwill, who've been around forever, uh, are quite fast, moving around at 50 speed, which means that there's no way that Graveguard, with their 28 speed, are going to catch them unless we let them, and maybe because we want to see some. Uh, I uh, want to see some of their melee animations. But anyway, enemies still having a pretty difficult time. We're going to back up and we're going to keep burning Aiton. And all while this is happening, one of the enemy corpse carts, they had two, has been destroyed. The Balefire corpse cart has been destroyed. And the other one is about to be destroyed as well. Our soul grinder has been sniping those things. And just like that terror geist, the enemy support units are pretty much done. Sadly, our soul grinder took several hits from our own flamers and dropped by like 55% of its HP. But that's okay because the flamers are doing plenty of work everywhere else. This is really working quite well. Honestly, I... Uh I originally had anticipated actually making use of our Marauders as we sort of retreated, attacked, retreated, attacked with the faster moving Flamers, but our Marauders haven't needed to contribute to the fight at all yet. Uh, the enemy just melts as they close the distance, and yes, this is sort of an ideal matchup for us in terms of Zinch and Flamers versus piles of slow-moving skeletons who are going to be also vulnerable to uh, fire. But despite the fact that this is our uh, in our favor, well, maybe not despite it, that's what we wanted, right? This is why we sent this army here, rather than to Ulthwan, where the enemy ranged units would be uh, much more troublesome for the flamers, as they could knock models out. But like this, they're in their element. Alrighty, and how are we doing with that balance of power? It's about 7, maybe 80% in our favor now. The flamers continue um, burning eight and jerks, and it looks like a unit of spirit hosts move in, but alas, uh, they are very badly damaged. And we can hit them from the side should we desire to do so. Yeah, and some, uh, some melee action from the exalted flamer here as well. And, oh my, oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's a shame that you don't see the uh, the flamers in melee more often, because the exalted flamers in particular have fantastic animations. That whole telekinesis thing where it picks up that uh, infantry unit that we just saw is just great. Well, it's done some damage, and then it continues attacking enemy skeletons, and quite effectively, I might add. Uh, but so do all of our flamers everywhere. And by the looks of it, the balance of power is just about ours. I think Kemler is dead as well. I think he got sniped by the Soul Grinder. I don't know what happened to him, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Because I did target him. Uh, usually Kemler sort of runs around, never getting into melee combat. And I presume dodging range hits as well. But it looks like that failed against our snipey Soul Grinder. Or possibly against some of the Flamers as well. Anyway, with that, the battle is just about ours. Going to melt away the last of the enemy units as they approach without ever having the marauders do a thing maybe i should have sent them in to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of xp but it was just too great seeing the fire you know this really reminds me of the skaven campaign the Icked claw campaign i had so much joy using uh, uh, using rattling guns and uh, the uh, warp fire throwers through the entire campaign same sort of thing here. Anyway, lovely.
All right, glorious, absolutely glorious to witness the fires of the warp absolutely obliterate the dead. And uh, we barely took any damage. The poor soul grinder got hit very hard by our own uh, flamers and suffered for it. And I think the exalted hero also, the damage that he took was also due to uh, catching a couple of hits from our flamers. Speaking of the flamers, 59, 43, 59, and 60. Thousand damage, heck of a debut for the uh, uh, for the flamer units, and a solid 19.6k on the soul grinder, which managed to snipe Kemmler and snipe the terror geist and snipe both corpse cards. I gotta love these things for that uh, well sniping that they do. Now we can't sack this because you just landed, so you're gonna have to occupy no choice in the matter, and we get that spell resistance for Lord's army as well. Who else but uh, Zin? or coronate army should have that spell resistance uh disc of zinch for one of you i almost said something else uh don't collect the income we do still have kuran to take hmm i wonder how that would go for this particular army and, Ooh, now that you've landed you can get your second soul grinder in which you've been waiting for and that's six out of six units uh you have these two exalted flamers from the Allied, let me just see here, from the Allied recruitment of the All-Seeing Eye. Sadly, we cannot yet get any more, and that is the only Zinchin faction that we have. If we really wanted to... Hmm... We could borrow some Rat Flamers, but they're not going to be as effective as the uh, Demonic Flamers, and they're also going to be a lot more fragile. A, due to the lack of... Uh, uh, due to... Ooh... Was in when mortars. Yeah, but that's not fire. We want fire. <laughs> hmm. I am tempted by it, I gotta say. Because we gotta consider what else would we get. I mean, it's gonna be a while before we can recruit more exalted flamers in here for more fire. And while we wait, we could use rats instead of the marauder horses. Not that I dislike the Marauder Horses, mind you, and the uh, uh, the kiting that they will do will inevitably be of some use. Hmm. Training for you. And then back to Ming. Uh, let's see, Clan Molders at 84. We got plenty. Ooh, we're not using Gisales in any army either. I do like the Gisales. Who doesn't like the Gisales? Hmm. Also tempting. Hmm. Not, a, not necessarily in this army, especially now that we have double the sniping power, although it could combine nicely. You know what? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I Once again, I also don't want to distract from the whole Zinchin aspect of this as, uh, well, late into the campaign, and we won't have much, too much more time to Zinch around uh, before uh, before it's over, and we gotta get all the Zinching in and before, we, uh, before we're done. The word Zinch has lost all meaning. Anyway, let's uh, quickly destroy uh, this little army. Just gonna do it manually as of because we've no choice in the matter. And just run at them and kill them all. Hopefully they won't be able to get too much mileage out of their archers and thereby destroy our blood letters. We'll just make sure to send our, uh, our shielded units up front as a first wave. All right, and it does look like there's a hill in the center of the line as well. How is the enemy deployed? All right, pretty big line. All right, that's fine. That works for us. Uh, we'll keep the cav not on the flanks, but hidden here in the forest so that they can run down any enemy range units that they can, well, get in range of. Uh, these guys are going to be in a blocky little formation. I'm sure they'll get hurt running forward, but this is their purpose. This is why we have them. This is why they have shields. All right, let's get to you here. Here, and here, then the non-hurt units of blood letters. We will deploy you like so. A little bit further behind. Here, 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 here. Uh, I guess we could put a few on the flanks. You, I think, are so hurt we're going to keep back because I'm a little bit wary of you being banished. We'll keep the War Shrines of Corn back in the second wave as well. You can go hunt down some eagles and then you can go hunt down the enemy lord. I hope that you're strong enough considering that your level is quite low. Anyway, three, four, start battle, move forward, and go, go, go. Let's say like so. You guys get ready to move in just close enough to hit those archers. Don't uh, go for skirmish mode. Toggle melee. You can go for that great eagle. 
And you can rush forward. Let's go for max speed. We got 12 uses of Fires of Chaos now, which is uh, kind of silly. But, uh, well, I don't think there's ever going to be a battle where we'll be able to get all uses. Unless we want to be really mean. And, hey, eagles, what are you, why are you here? How dare you? This is so rude. Uh... Unless we want to be really mean and do a siege where we just wait and just drop fires of chaos on the enemy. Kind of like a pseudo-artillery sort of deal. Ain't the worst idea in the world. I've come up with worse ideas and went with them. Alrighty, you guys are nearly ready. Uh, eagles are being hunted. Let's speed it up a little bit more. And hey, 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 okay, okay, okay. Range units are going to try to shoot our... Oh. Wrong thing. I meant to go normal speed, not slow speed. I was wondering why it looked so weird for a second there. Alrighty, and hit those eagles. Alright, march now. And you go forward. Good, and Kev, you could help with this, but I'm honestly a little bit wary of you hurting our own unit. Uh, we're going to use this to do some area denial. Do this, they'll move away from it and hopefully not fire on our bloodthirster for a little bit. They're still firing. Dodge those shots while well, the rest of our units move in. Yes, they will go for the Marauders, but that's fine by me. Uh, you need to go for the Mage and the Swordsmasters. Be nice if we just slightly damaged somebody enough to do some summons. Alright, you guys just, just, just go here. Alright, come on, run in there. Fortunately, they're still targeting the shielded units as long as our blood letters are fine. Well, they're fine. Uh, don't fight these guys directly. Well, I mean, do fight them directly, but uh, well, be careful by getting yourselves killed. Uh, go for the Great Eagles again, and damn those range units. Really doing a number on that poor bloodthirster. But fortunately now, the blood letters are moving in completely unharmed. And chase the eagles down, and then get back into it, go after that archmage, and soon you will be hurt enough to summon Forsaken. Not quite yet, but soon. Uh, you can activate your buff to buff everybody nearby, and there we go. Enemy is gonna start having a pretty bad time, Kev. Get ready to run the enemy down. You can hit the enemy in the back. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course. Of course. <laughs> Oh, they'll never leave the poor war shrines alone. That's why I was so wary of building these things. They're just so they're just so vulnerable. Huh. You look like you're at 50% HP. You're definitely at 50% HP, but we still don't have a caster in here to give you that missile resistance. Uh you better not die, buddy. Like so. And damn those arrangements. Okay, just just run at them. Just run at them. No, the war shrine! <laughs> We might have to summon another one. Alright, just pop this there, and it's going to rout. They'll try to move away from it. Yeah. Even with them, um, with, with the War Shrine so far behind the lines, even the basic archers, and basic archers firing at them, it's just still taking so much damage. On the bright side, though, the rest of our line reached the enemy line just fine. Yes, these things really need more missile resistance. And you're having a little bit of trouble with that swords master. You are going to drop down on the Archmage since he's busy. And let's activate another buff for everybody around with... I know you're not that hurt. But you're also kind of far from everybody else. And no, 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 no. Don't go after that thing. <laughs> well, which I mean the war shrine. Chase that thing down. Uh, you're good at chasing. You know what? You can help out with that. There we go, fine. I've been waiting to summon those Forsaken for ages now. Go summon or chase that down. You guys are good. Go mob the lore master. You go chase. You guys are good. And speed it up. We should be good now. Battle's over. And you survive just barely, but survive. Alright, there we go. Alright, at least this way no Yuna died, but funnily enough... Uh, <laughs> It was very, very close down to it. I mean, we had barely any losses. All the damage was to the uh, poor War Shrine. We do have an upgrade that gives them 15% ward save, which should be decent, but it's still going to be a huge pincushion and a huge target. I think it was only two archers that were focusing it down, and it dropped so darn quickly. And I guess so did the... Uh, the Bloodthirster. Uh, maybe get more resistances on these things if we get the requisite points. Hopefully, anyway. Sacrifice captives. Good. And then it's not moving. Yeah, yeah, Lord of Corn. Uh, Kurgan Chieftain plus two. Do we have a Kurgan? Yeah, you already have a Kurgan Chieftain. I was hoping you'd heal up a little bit more because, frankly, your healing ain't uh, ain't all that. Uh, yeah, Sword of Might. Don't care. And go to Elysia. And occupy. Uh, oh, lovely. Now. Can you 
Uh, okay, well, we need more regular... Well, we need... Hmm. I was about to say we need more regular blood letters, but at the same time, I was thinking maybe a couple more uh, blood thirsters would do. Six blood letters should be sufficient, I would think. Uh, yes, yeah, so what I want to see is this. Savage Bloodlust gives us buffs for all the demonic melee units, namely the blood letters. Cast Vanguard will be somewhat useful. Uh, Monstrous Strength gives us... No missile resistance, so it's relatively useless. We don't really care about buffing the melee capabilities of war shrines, coronate or not. Hammer and Tandle gives us eight melee def. Oh wait, uh, that's a warp fire I'm looking at. Uh, gives us eight melee defense, so at least it'll make the bloodthirsters more tanky in melee. But that's not as much as what we're concerned with. We're concerned with so speed and malice gives us fifteen percent missile resistance for bloodthirsters. Freakish Mutations gives us another 5% ward saves for the ward shrines. So between that and war machines. These aren't really war machines per se, but uh, anyway. Uh, there'll be 20% ward save. A decent bit of a difference. They really need more missile resistance. Mm. We'll work on it. Anyway, uh, let's see what, where we want to spend this point. You're still kind of not capable of fighting too well. I'm thinking we're going to pop a point into warp fire for those bloodthirsters, as I'm inclined to say that I'd rather have three bloodthirsters and six blood letters. So I just can't get enough of watching bloodthirsters fight. It's too entertaining. All right, now, speaking of, uh, Death's Bounty, you are going to switch to Fists of Corn for this one turn. And I guess Bloom of Decay, you can switch to... Hmm... We do need another Chaos War Shrine of Nurgle. Hmm... That's probably what we're gonna get. I mean, we could also start... No, wait, we can't use the Plague Bearers. We have to recruit them from allies because uh, Bellicor's army is maxed out in terms of gifted units. Alright, fine. Contagious Worship, grab that Chaos War Shrine of Nurgle. Frankly, I'd like to give one to Bellicor as well. The, the ability to heal single entities is just too useful. Alright, anyway. Uh, skulls for the Skull Front Throne will be complete next turn, so we'll have another Chaos Gift of Corn, Lord Not Moon, Path to Glory, Outpost Upgrades, and Damage Buildings Commandments. Uh, they've come to the wrong place, most definitely for the gate, and you're in the same place. Beautiful. I guess we're in the turn. Alrighty. Scarby, what you doing out there, bud? You going for Black Crag? Well, I would like one of you to take Black Crag. It sounds like we get any use out of those gold mines since the chaos corruption they provide is relatively useless. It's, uh, will attack us, but it looks like we did not notice the, uh... Hmm. I'll try back off. They will not continue, okay. Hey, we can keep trying. All that time they're wasting their the position of multiple armies and oh King Sephiroth's back. Okay, fine. Uh don't really care about Granite Massive. Aha, clever AI. Eh? If he had taken it, we would have just destroyed him. Carl. You sure you wanna do that, bud? You are very close to uh, Glugmir. And he didn't take it either. And peace treaty with Azag. That's obviously not going to happen because we guarantee a war with you next turn. Where Zag will reclaim Stonemine Tower, but it's not a territory we care about. It's coastal and thus we can't make use of any uh, resources. And on top of that, it has no resources. Could probably trade some of these. I was really hoping that Scarbrand would uh, knock Wurzag out, but uh, well... Not like we're holding those territories. And there it is. And the biggest war it begins, though once again I don't really uh, care for this all that much. Ah, Tyrion, you coward. The ambush got foiled and he ran. He just ran. <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll take Toranrock and Griffin Gate while we're here. And Malekith, you sacked it and got your army hurt rather than taking... Oh, you're, you're such a... You're just, just, just take it. Why do you have to be ordered to do these things? Uh, all right, right of Sotek performed ambush foiled. Wow, well, three ambushes foiled. Could have at least gotten one. All right, but we did get the gift of corn. Army receives plague for an Aerith Magath. Uh, ultimate campaign victory, vassalize or destroy. Bone Rattlers, Broken Axe, and Bloody Hands. Wait. Did... Ah. Well, that's interesting. Uh... What's his face didn't respawn? respawn. Huh. I wonder why that is. Curious. 
Hmm. Skarsnik, I mean. That's the one who didn't respawn. Am I just, just to... Wait. Bone Rattlers, Broken Axe, and Bloody Hands. Grimgor didn't respawn. Wait, has there been a change to the way that the... Oh, man, I need to read the patch notes. Does, does the endgame no longer revive factions that... Oh, my. Huh. And they spawned around Wurzag rather than spawning around Ekrand. Does this mean... They're kind of spawning closer to us now. Oh, no, they spawn around Ground the Paunch. Uh, what about Bone Rattlers? Oh, this is very interesting. I like this change. I like this change very much. I was... Well, I am annoyed about the fact that Archeon trekked all the way to Kazidir Kulaz. Uh, but... Generally speaking, I like the change. Oh, this is gonna be... An, oh! And guess who's near this stuff? Gulator is. <laughs> oh, well, then. Uh, top knots? Where are the top knots? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I'd like to see whether they're in, like, the middle of our... Uh, uh, the middle of our thing. I really like the fact that dead factions don't revive. Very good change. I appreciate that. I really should have read the patch notes. And just because uh, I find it annoying, like what we were doing, trekking to places where we know an enemy army will revive and spawn randomly, it made no sense. Uh, this way, at least, it's sort of a last hurrah, similar to the Empire in Flames. And Top Knots appeared mount near Mount Silverspear, okay. Now let's send Village down there to uh, kill them off, because I fear they'll take Mount Silverspear, and, well, I don't want them to. Uh, village, you're going to go right here. We're going to continue. And we're going to pop a uh, cold in here, disband the riders. We're not going to keep them anyway. Never really intended to. And let's do gifts. All right, good. Then we will uh, pop in Death's Bounty right here. And, oh, we can't switch you this turn. Well, that's a shame. Okay. Uh, huh, I wonder if we would have been able to do that if I had done that the other way around. Switched you first and then added the new gift, but, uh, well, who knows. Uh, mystical mutations. I believe I wanted another mutilith. I possibly wanted another soul grinder. I definitely wanted another cockatrice, I think. Just to double check. Oh, you know what? Just delete this for now so that we know what's missing and what isn't. We have two Lords of Change, should we want one in Village's army. I'm kind of sad about that Cockatrice that died in this army, so maybe we'll just get the Cockatrice back. Or, if we wanted to, temporarily, what we could do is we could activate Arcane Wisdom to get the Warp Flame attacks for the entire for all Zinchin units. Not that I think it's going to be crazy necessary. Let's go for the abominations for now. Uh, we're going to swap, 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 <laughs> swap out. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, this isn't Slanesha gift. Uh, Contagious Worship for. I believe we got a War Shrine of Nurgle last time. Mm, gonna have to go back to Bloom of Decay. All right. Uh, Slanishy stuff. Explosive Sensation and Endless March. We'll change Explosive Sensation to what? Wait, were we even looking for any more Slanishy units? I think we were done with them. At least with the armies that we currently have that are of the Slanishy variety. We've tried all the units that we have access to. And what the heck is this? I'll probably run, right? No way he'll fight this. But let's take a look. Will he stay or will he go? He will go. But... How far will he... Ah, not far enough, Gorok. Looks like you're doomed. Frankly, his army's kind of pathetic. It's just made up of skinks. I mean, don't underestimate skinks. Don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit late uh, for that sort of thing. Uh, just send him down and destroy him. Heroic victory. Mm, the other army will then attack us. All right. I don't mind. We can fight this. Go. Done here. 
All righty, here we go. We fight under Nurglish skies by the looks of it, the desert of the desert itself, uh, with all that hidden life. And that it has has become tainted by the grandfather. Sort of like this entire campaign uh, in a very good way. Anyway, it looks like we're going to have to teach Gorok yet another lesson. As uh, we've defeated him with Malefax's army before and we're going to do so again. Spoilers. Uh, the uh, the skull, skull recyclers. Uh, the skull cannons are going to fire upon the enemy as they approach. Going to seek to do as much damage to those blessed temple guards as possible since they're a pretty scary unit but the real fight has begun over on the flanks as a pair of our pair of uh, fiends of Slanesh have charged in to absolutely obliterate uh, these feral cold ones who are going to try to go after our units of uh, uh, range marauder cab and the marauders were trying to go after the pterodon riders but it looks like the pterodon riders will land Fire Leech Volo Pterodon Riders specifically will land upon the fiends, and thus we're going to have to be careful about killing our own units with those javelins and axes. And be careful with that friendly fire, especially as the Marauder horses have a tendency to concentrate fire on a single unit. If you're unlucky, they can all hit yours. Anyway, with the enemy damaged, we summon a unit of Chaos Spawn to take hit the hits for the uh, more fragile fiends, while the fiends continue to work and add Act as the damage dealers sort of in the middle of the fight and sort of in the back as well now over on the sidelines we have our marauder horses obliterating the running escaping pterodon riders and they will continue to do so while the fiends continue to fight now the main host is nearly arrived as well we have continued bombarding them with our skull cannons though now we have put them behind our lines up on top of this hill where they have a fairly decent vantage point doesn't look like they're accurate against the pterodon riders is doing all that great there we go but at the very least they do plenty of damage to the enemy melee troops and the melee troops will charge in we'll do a little bit of a counter charge oh those poor skinks explode just as we uh, move on in and the warriors of corn will lead with those dual axes and uh, ripping apart chaff infantry like skinks is something they can do with gusto we're gonna pop that miasma of pestilence to uh, reduce the enemy's capabilities uh, the uh, marauder or not marauders the uh, chaos warriors of corn will get some help from the mm, Chaos Warriors of Zinch and the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle as well. Halberds and Great Swords, I want to say. No, Great Axes. Both adding armor piercing to the fray, though probably not as needed against those poor skinks. Having a little bit of a tougher time on the leftmost flank, however, as a unit of Zinch and Halberds and Nurglish Great Axes are holding off a unit of Saurus and that unit of Blessed Temple Guards. Going to uh, take some time to work through these guys, and they will give as good, if not better, than they take compared to our units. There we go, bringing down a, a Chaos Warrior of Zinch. And these guys will be exchanging shots for quite the while by the looks of it. Look at those Blessed Temple Guards, just standing and fighting. Glorious. Alright, in the meantime, let's see how we're doing. The enemy flank has by and large collapsed. The uh, summoned unit of Chaos Spawn has done its job in taking the damage, as we can clearly see, while the fiends have dished it out, uh, destroying the various enemy units with the one exception of the Soros Spears that have arrived. We're going to have to slowly but surely kill them one by one. They won't die quite as quickly. Quite as quickly as the Feral Cold Ones and Pterodon Riders, I mean, but it's alright. With the uh, with them debuffed by the Soporific Musk of the Fiends, plus the damage coming in from various sources here, and another summon of Forsaken, and we should be just fine in clearing those guys out and then joining the rest of the army as needed. Gorok is still in the fight, but the majority of his melee troops have fallen. Gonna try to knock those Pterodon Riders with Fire Leech Bolas out of the sky, and we're going to have our Sorcerer, together with some trolls, charge into the back of those Saurus and Temple Guard. Yes, they're still fighting. Uh, for like two minutes straight, just fighting Chaos Warriors with great weapons and halberds. Really quite impressive. I mean, 78 melee defense on those uh, Blessed Temple Guard units. And they started with 21k HP. That's very, very nice. 
And no wonder they're taking so long to go down. It's two heavily armored juggernaut units that are sort of going head to head. We don't have Chosen here, perhaps, but nonetheless. And funnily enough, our Chosen don't have nearly as much armor as our Chaos Warriors do. Which is a little bit disappointing. It looks like the, uh, the, not the tree, the trade good building, I forgot which one it was, I think it was iron, uh, that gives additional, uh, well, armor, doesn't apply to Chosen, it only applies to Chaos Warriors, which is kind of interesting, but also weird, right? You wouldn't expect Chosen to have 50 less armor than Chaos Warriors, but that's what, it en what, what ends up happening. Chosen should be more heavily armored than Chaos Warriors, as they probably have much more you know, relic plate and stuff like that. Fancier artifacts. They are chosen. After all, and they're going to be quite rare compared to regular Chaos Warriors. Anyway, it looks like the enemy army has collapsed. Gorok is booking it out of there, and it's just a matter of knocking down the last of the Blessed Temple Guard, who we're going to be fighting to the last. Unbreakable as they are. Anti-large defender, predatory senses, a juggernaut, unbreakable. Heck of a unit, heck of a fight. Certainly a worthy foe in the form of these Blessed Temple Guard, but alas, they have to go. And they get surrounded by everybody at the last moment, and there we are. With that, the battle is well and truly ours. We're going to do our best to, well, nothing. There we go. All right, you know, I am uh, I am glad we fought that. That actually turned out to be a much better battle. And then I was expecting, once again, don't underestimate those skinks, but certainly don't underestimate Blessed Temple Guards. 12k damage, and they held off so many of our units and fought to the end as well while Gorok ran. Great job to them. As usual, the skill cannons uh, did well, and both of the fiends have been impressing uh, so far. Uh, I, I spent so many episodes wanting to get fiends in an army, and I'm really glad that they're uh, excelling, let's say, in this particular one. Uh, we are going to, I guess, just keep on sacrificing those captives. Because 100,000 souls is not enough, but hey, we can still use favor for various uh, things, though namely building our, uh, our settlements. You can go back into ambush and go right here. You can't reach the next place anyway, so might as well set up. All right, let's get back to moving. As Zazel, you are going to... Oh, look at Satang. Hmm. Too bad he's not on an army, though. I'm just sitting there. He's just sitting there. Well, we're heading to the Isle of the Crimson Skull anyway. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, you're not going to be able to catch anything. You know what? Let's say Kolek will take the High Sentinel. And then he can use the port to sail out and kill off any other little mini armies. I have to go over there anyway, but anyway, uh, I want to resolve that because it's a waste of our time. We are going to... You know, we don't actually need to sack it with Kolek's army, do we? His army is more or less max... Oh, I forgot about the uh, the two newer units of the Shagoths. They still need a little bit of XP. Ah, whatever, not a big deal. Ah, there's that army. Now, where are you going to go? Are you going to try to get around us and take something elsewhere? Because I don't see this... Going too well for you, let's say. Anyway, uh, let's have you land Azazel at the Isle of the Crimson Skull. Like so, and once again, not worth fighting. Eh. Bit of damage on you, but that's fine, and we're not going to sack because we will then move away, so we'll just occupy. Uh, and thereby heal up. There we go. Not quite to full, but full enough for our purposes. Uh, though, never say that to Slanesh. Anyway, Gilator. I was going to send you to attack a Lorelor, and we're actually not at war with them. I actually could assume that all Orky factions would instantly declare war on us, but they did not. They did declare war on the Empire of Undeath, though. <laughs> that's going to be uh, that's going to be a problem for them. And this is going to be a problem. The village is relatively close by. Ow. 
I'd hate to lose Karagangazar and Akindor. That's a 10% physical resistance buff for our uh, Manticores. Mm. We could trust a rat to uh, take Karag Drawn, but I I doubt that he's going to do it. We just can't trust. I mean, even with both of these guys going here, would they actually take it? I don't really care about the wood. What if there's a stack there? We can't trust our allies. And Arath, you're going to have to do it. And then we'll send in... The rest to do it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. It's not worth fighting. Sack, though. And then take it. Still need that exalted hero of yours. Occupy. And the exalted hero can join you sort of down here while you move to sort of... Uh, uh, sort of deal with these guys. They did spawn a decent amount of armies. This is the new way that the endgame scenario works, such that the newly spawned armies... Uh, the number of armies... From factions that are destroyed gets added to the armies from factions that didn't get destroyed perhaps you came all the way here samoth i really wish i had known about this change because he traveled so long in an expectation of a massive fight against grimgore well you're crossing over the mountains again go back to the empire of undeath then and i guess we're gonna have lidrid follow you and i mostly just got a few of these units in here to uh, transfer them over to uh, to Nerath. Hmm, I guess both of you can travel for now. And we also now don't need the marauders or the horses in here. And they won't serve any more purpose. So we can delete the them. I'll keep the aspiring champions because they could still potentially be useful in an army. And maybe the giants as well, though the auto resolve does hate them. So, uh, uh, you can get the hands of decay and more trolls though. Because this is all going to our troll army. I don't know how many trolls we'll need here, but, uh, well, it'll be some, I'm sure. In Gilator, you're probably going to attack in a second, we'll still probably declare war on those. Orkies, can you reach Occam's Forever Maze? You can indeed. Alright, let's see if we can pull this up. Rockgar. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that one bit. Well, if this Slaneshi faction is fated to die, then it's fated to die, let's say. And because we still have to take their, uh, we still have to take their fortress. So, Kukar, go. Are you at war with, you are at war with factions, so we could ask Krakar to join the war, but I'm not going to do that. Declare war. Kairalas, and is Abyssa here at the, nope, it's just a Villatresk. Hey, oh, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea, goes to Pahwax. Okay, good luck. Hey, when you're the one who gets ambushed to the, uh, uh, you do get to make a speech. That's quite interesting. Anyway, here we go. It's certainly been a while since we've been ambushed and Oxyodal has come in in force. Now, we weren't able to take a look at what uh, he had, so let's see what his army is like. Colossal, Colossodon Hunters, okay, so they've got plenty of uh, anti-large, and unfortunately, the uh, and the Flesh Hounds do count as large entities. It looks like the Flesh Hounds are in a terrible position being in, deployed in the center of the column, which means they're going to get charged by the Feral Cold Ones and Blessed Cold Ones Spear Riders, plus whatever Skink, Colossodon Hunter, Croxagore, and Dino support. Uh, our main infantry are going to take a little bit of a time to react, because obviously Obviously, the enemy charges immediately, and you don't have quite enough time. I probably ignore the uh, Gorby's chariots for now while we get everybody else into position, um, but I can't wait to see these guys in action as well. Been a while teching up to the Gorby's chariots, and yes, CA, please actually add Gorbeasts themselves. There's no reason for them to be, for their models to exist only on chariots and uh, not as a separate unit. Add them for corn, add them for undivided, but damn. Please, 
Adam. Anyway, here we go. Our poor, poor pups are going to get crushed in between all those fast movers. Good move by the AI as these are demonic units and they will melt if let if the uh, if they take sufficient damage. It looks like they're also getting focused down by the Skink Oracle, and it looks like the AI has made it its mission in this particular battle to kill off our doggos. Can they survive? Well, it looks like we fight under the skies, blessed by corn. So at the very least, we have uh, uh, we have that advantage per se. Uh, we have finally managed to send most of our units into something resembling a formation. At the very least, the halberds are going to sort of set up in a semicircle here formation and hold off as many of the enemy as they can. Pretty, uh, pretty good looking cinematic battle as well. And just due to the, uh, just due to the lighting, if nothing else. Unfortunately, it looks like Karanax puppies are very much in trouble and are shaken and very heavily damaged with about 30% of their HP remaining, and they are still surrounded by Feral Cold Ones and uh, Blessed Karoxagors, or Sacred Karoxagors, specifically the co cohort of Huatl. We're doing a little bit better over on the at the back of the column, however. In the back of the column is where all of our, uh, all of our motorcycles were deployed. All of our skull cannons and all of our units of... Uh, Blood Shrines, plus on top of that, two of the units of the Doggos are all here, and they're absolutely wrecking face. Unfortunately for the enemy, they sent piles of infantry at us here, where perhaps they should have sent the Cold Ones and the Spear Riders instead. To surround these poor, to surround these motorcycles and prevent them from just obliterating the poor skinks. So, the back of the column going very, very well. And yeah, the, the blood letters on these things just always look like they're having the best time. <laughs> this is a horrifying situation for those poor skinks to be in. Anyway, let's check back on what's going on in the main line. We have Oxyodal somewhat facing off against Kuhar, or at the very least Kuhar's trying to break through the piles of skinks to get at their master. Over here we have some cornflakes <laughs> facing off against the Legion of Chakwa, and we are still holding our semicircle. The Karanax puppies are very close to beginning to melt away. Well, we just gotta try to keep them alive, though, we'll see. And the Legion of Chakwa, these guys always look fantastic. They've got all that uh, gold armor plating on them. And despite being regular source and not Temple Guard. And I always end up wishing we could make, like, a whole army with this sort of... Uh, with this sort of stuff. Like, I, I feel like what they should do is they take the skin of the Legion of Chakwa and, for example, for Croc Gar make all his warriors look like this, or maybe make them upgrade to look like this over time. Uh, well, I guess that's something the modders can do as well. But anyway, a uh, very nice matchup between the Legion of Chakwa and the Cornflakes here, who are winning, but they are certainly taking some damage. The rear of the enemy column has, or the rear of our column, I guess, has by and large forced those skin cohorts to collapse, though. Damn. Tier 1 skin cohorts, 69 melee attack and 51 melee defense. No armor, perhaps, but those frickin' stats. They've climbed just as high as many of our stats have. In fact, they have slightly better stats than Chaos Warriors of Corn with Halberds, which is quite interesting certainly wasn't expecting a skin cohort. Uh, but yeah, this is what I was talking about. The SFO is balancing is uh, sort of based around the idea that if everything's overpowered, nothing is. But it also means that everything works, and over time with sufficient technologies and buffs, and, well, obviously veterancy, all the, uh, even all the basic units become really, really strong, which is great, because it means you can continue using all your basic units late into the game. And I mean, granted, I also use basic units late into the game in vanilla as well, don't get me wrong, but uh, just for fun, not because they uh, are always viable, per se. 
Anyway, it looks like with that the enemy army will finally shatter. Uh, didn't get a crazy amount of value out of our Gorby's chariots, unfortunately. Well, we got to see them, I guess. Uh, but uh, they only did pretty much one thing throughout this battle. The doggos were dying in the center of the column, so essentially we sent our Gorby's chariots into the center to just act as a big old mass, a block. And our doggos moved through them to escape and survive by the looks of it. While the Gorby's chariots were unable to charge or do what they're supposed to do, they did keep the doggos in the center alive, which I guess is worth... And no guess about it, that's really, really worth. Uh, Karanax puppies were the ones that nearly died there. And this unit got badly damaged as well, Kukar's good boys. Very close, at least for those particular units, so great job to Oxyodal. Though I gotta say, I... There we go, poor little guy. Poor little guy goes down. I remember confederating or recruiting uh, Oxyodal in my Karak Gar campaign and being quite disappointed with him as a unit, as he was supposed to be good at sniping things, but he didn't seem to be doing any damage to anything, which was kind of disappointing. I am curious to see, well, next time I play Lizards, how he's changed since that time, and hopefully he's a little bit more effective. But anyway, great, great fight for Kuhar. All right, man, I gotta say I was not expecting Oxyodal to pop up on this side of the uh, uh, of the enemy fortress, but perhaps I should have, as obviously the uh, uh, the two settlements between us and the fortress did belong to him, so he kind of jumped over the hardest target, which was an interesting choice. Uh, but at the very least, he is uh, done. Uh, I think this time we're going to take kill captives, because our doggos... Yeah, several of them got very badly hurt. They got pinned between the Feral Cold Ones and the uh, Blessed Cold One Spear Riders and Croxagors and other uh, big units, so we didn't have the mass to push through them, and thus these units got the most hurt. Our Chaos Sorcerer of Metal did decent damage, but did get damaged in turn by the darn Skink Oracle, who also kept launching fireballs at our, uh, uh, at our Flesh Hounds. Well, damn them. And it looks like the MVP, in terms of kills at least, 23k damage, were the the Blood Angels, and ooh, 102 kills and 21k damage on the Cornflakes as well. And the Dragon Slayer's got nearly 20k as well. Very nice. Very nice. Kill the captives. Alright, now I take it Villatresca is not going to help Oxyodal's army survive that. I wish I hadn't declared war on you before uh, doing that. And Kukar gets a Vanguard Deployment. You know what? That does feel appropriate for uh, what his army functions like. Uh, we are going to do this. And I'm going to hope that we can do that without losing the Flesh Hounds. And by the looks of it, we can. I wonder how many will die to that. 11 down to... Huh. None of the Flesh Hounds died. One of the Chariots died, because of course it did. Game. Uh, let's take Kill Captives again. And check what we have here. Looks like a pretty darn decent defense, actually, by the looks of it, which might mean we may have to fight it manually. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fight it manually, but so we will fight it manually at the start of a next episode. Yeah, we definitely don't have time to fight it now. We'll take that out and then hopefully immediately peace out with uh, Villa Tresca. She went from plus 500 to minus 470. Uh... It only has the two settlements, sir. Uh. Hmm. I'm thinking... Do we actually do that? Or... Hmm. Do we besiege her until she's ready to give... Until... Kroggar takes the altar of facades. I don't want... I don't want that, uh situation that we had early in the campaign the Sigvald to repeat itself and this guy uh, destroys the altar of facade so we may have to keep Kukar here while we besiege this if they sally out we destroy them in the field but you know remain besieging just make sure we don't kill off a few of the enemy mortal units 
And then as soon as Karaki takes that, we take that, and then, I don't know, loop back to kill off Karaki. Certainly an option. We also have a long way to travel along the uh, Chaos Wastes. So I do wish we had another army here. And... Hmm. May want to send one there via one of the... Uh, hmm via one of the sea lines. Anyway, anyway, those are all thoughts for the next episode because I'm calling it here. No time remains. I'll do some admin between the episodes and next time we move to try to counteract the spawn of orcs wherever it is that they spawned as well as move into position to uh, finalize our uh, destruction of the elven, lizard, and human empires and undead empires as well. Anyway, uh, more Archaeon to come as long as it works and as long as the engagement threshold continues to be reached at least out here so and do leave those likes and comments below if you're into that don't forget to lead wait i already said that uh all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching